Hey, Chuck. How are you? I'm doing quite well. Thank you. It's a nice, chilly day. Yes, fall, I think, is finally creeping in. I know. I love this time love. of year. I do, too. I do, too. Me, too. Me, too. I don't have to have an excuse then to watch scary movies. <laughs> the other so. thing I like about fall is that... We get some really good movies coming our way and fun stuff, hopefully, coming up in the very near future. Yes, yes, that um, would be great. It will be with award season just around the corner, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, more on that probably next week. We might discuss a little bit today, but more on that next week. Uh, where do you want to start? Should we start with like the biggest thing, the, the movie that has all the tails wagging? I think we should. All yeah, right. yeah. Don't okay. worry, darling. I think she's a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> Darling. <laughs> Who are we referring to? Miss Wilde or yes. Miss Pew? I think Miss Wilde. I don't yeah. think Miss Pew has a darn thing to worry about, do you? No, no. I think that she was very smart um, in distancing herself from, from all this. If you're not sure about what we're referring to, you've been living under a rock. Uh, Olivia Wilde has directed her second film called Don't Worry, Darling. Uh, and a rumor has it, more than rumor, that she and her lead, Mr. Harry Styles, and if anyone can explain that to me, I'd appreciate it. I can't, sorry. I can't no either. can do. Uh, we, we discussed this with other people, yes. and I wasn't satisfied with the <laughs> answer I got. And, and that is definitely a conversation that you had to be a fly in the right. wall, and we will never, ever repeat. No, no. <laughs> but apparently Miss Wilde and Mr. Styles started up a, a little affair, which alienated Florence Pugh, who's the lead in the film. Uh, there was also some ruction with Shia LaBeouf, who was originally cast in the film, was let go. Uh, and then there was some conversation as to why he wasn't involved in the film. Miss Wilde said one thing, Mr. LaBeouf said something else, and it seems though he was right. Uh, all of this has just blown up uh, in various press conferences and interviews in which Miss Wilde has either been evasive or just tone deaf has not read the room properly as far as responding to this. Yes. Until a recent interview with Stephen Colbert. This was just on Wednesday evening. Oh, okay. I did not see this. Good. I, I watched that actually this morning. It's Thursday. We record on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And um, Mr. Colbert w had a very tactful interview style. He asked the questions in much the same way that I think you and I would have had the press tour not have been canceled, that we were scheduled to talk with Olivia Wilde. We, were, we had an interview, yep. And, and I'm, I'm so, I'm disheartened, I'm saddened, the fact that um, there wasn't any kind of confidence in talking with us regular press people that we could have this social decorum to talk about things in a mature manner. Talk about the movie. The movie, there's an idea. Which is what we're idea. supposed to be talking about. But Stephen Colbert did address the issues at hand, the Florence Pugh thing, the spit gate, as I guess it's uh, now, now there's referred, that. Yeah. To, referred to, and um, also Olivia Wilde's behavior on set. And he, he approached it in a very tactful way, and she was quite the politician and answering the questions. Obviously, extremely well rehearsed. She's a, she's a bright, bright woman, and she can skirt around anything and answer it without answering it. And that's a problem. Well, it tells you a lot. If you don't answer the question right. directly, it tells you <laughs> what actually happened. Mm -hmm. And um, you and I have had a lot of discussions about whether or not this would even be an issue if she were a man. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it would be or wouldn't be to the heightened not level as, that it is. Not However, as big. Mm -hmm. because Ms. Wilde calls out the quote unquote patriarchy that has held the reins in Hollywood, which is very, very true for so long, and all the horrid behavior, all the miscommunications, all the deplorable things that, that these men have done, then she cannot do them. No. <laughs> People in glass houses cannot throw stones. And unfortunately, she did not rise up to that higher bar. However, my heart does go out to her because I think she's got a really decent movie on her hands. Yeah, and, and that's nobody's the problem. talking about the movie. So should we talk about the movie? That, that's the problem. Um... Yeah, you and I have said this isn't fair. We know it's not fair, but she needs to be aware. She needed to be aware of that. Somehow she felt as though she's going to float all over this. And, and it is a shame. This movie I, I'm going to categorize in the same category as Ishtar and Waterworld. And that those two movies weren't given a fair shake either when they came out. Uh, because of budget things and other behind-the-scenes things. Critics were, had their knives sharpened for that one. Are either of those movies great? No. 
I do have nightmares about Waterworld, though. Okay. I, I, I actually think it's decent. Yeah. And Ishtar is decent. Neither are classics, but they surely did not deserve the almost universal negative reviews they got when they were released. And I think it's the same case with Don't Worry, Darling. Right. I, You and I both really liked it. I, yeah. Maybe I liked it more than you, but I, I thought it was incredibly smart. Uh, it had me guessing. I wasn't quite sure where we were headed. I think that the statements she's making are pretty obvious. Right. But even though they're obvious, that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be brought up again. Right. Because, again, you know, as we know, as human beings, we don't learn and we keep repeating our stupid mistakes. And it's gorgeous. It is beautiful. It is absolutely visually stunning and the soundtrack you and oh i were humming gosh. around and tapping tapping along as we you know if you, if you know anything about pop music american pop music from the 50s and 60s every everything's there i forgot to put that in my review i cannot believe that i forgot to put the musical well, score in my review we saw it about three weeks ago so you know there's that but yeah. the setup is is that miss pew plays alice there's a first clue right there uh she is uh living the suburban dream uh, in the 1950s, it seems. Oh, I want you to put air quotes around that, please. What? Suburban dream. Well, for that, at that point, it was. Okay. At that point, it was considered, you know, what you what you aspired to. Your husband went off to work, uh, had a job, and you stayed home, and you were happy as a clam, scrubbing tubs and uh, vacuuming the the uh, thing, and uh, your ex expectation was to have dinner on the table, be dressed to the nines with a drink in your hand as he walked through the door, and then who knows what happens. Well, this movie shows you what happens. Um, <laughs> again, yeah, no. It, but I'm saying that was yes. the, 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 the picture of this. Well, she starts to think that maybe this place uh, that they live, and there's no real name for it, but Harry... Victory, I think it is. Well, they work on the Victory Project. Okay. Maybe the town was called Victory, okay. too. Okay, okay. But Harry and everyone in the town, all the men work for this thing called the Victory Project. We don't really know what that is, but there are indications it ain't good. And Chris Pine is the head of this. I loved Chris Pine. He was amazing. He, you know, he has so much fun as the bad guy. Yeah. And the you know, cult leader. And even in the hero roles he's played, there's always been that little degree of menace right under the surface. And Wilde was able to recognize that. And he's so much fun to watch. He is. He's he so is. oily. He's so slimy. He's, he's one of the best parts of the film. Florence Pugh and he, I think, are the two standouts in this movie. You want to see them in another movie again. Right, right, yeah. 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 Uh, and yes, nothing is as it seems in Victory, and Miss Pugh starts to pull this apart. Her sanity starts to fray, and this thing goes down a couple paths I did not think that it would. Uh, it ends up, for me, resembling uh, an even darker vision of the Truman Show, I thought. Oh. In much, in many ways. Oh yeah. Uh, I was surprised by it. I was never bored by it. Mm -hmm. It runs over two hours, and yet I wasn't checking my watch. Okay. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it, and uh, it's a shame that uh, I, I, I think it's gonna. It's going to tank. It's going to tank because of all this other stuff. Right. I think it's trending at 30% right now on Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes. Tomatoes. I yeah. put my review up and I bumped it up to 31. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I will check now. But yeah, it was in the 30s. I don't yeah. think it's even gotten past 40. And a lot of that was, uh, many reviews were uh, from Venice when it, where it premiered. Right, right. And uh, I, I enjoyed the movie, not as much as you. I felt like there were a few holes in the plot. And then in the end... I didn't have everything answered. Now, I don't have to have all the answers to something, but it has to make sense at the end. And there were a couple of questions that didn't let it make sense. So that it, it stumbles me. at the end. I, it, I'll give you that. And, and I also feel like yeah. it stumbles in the middle. We, you know, there's that term that people in the film industry use. You got to be able to kill your darlings. Um, but she was worried too much, I think, maybe about killing those darlings. I think it needed to be added a little bit more mm. tightly. I did get a little bored in the middle. I, it, it didn't keep me engaged the entire time so I had to rely on my visual entertainment of how gorgeous the setting is. There every single detail, there's nothing that they don't pay attention to in this movie to bring it back to the 1950s. It's incredible. Yeah. And I love the cars from back in that time. Cars and the clothes. And they do and the... accentuate that. Oh, and the clothes are just gorgeous. Yeah. And and I loved um, Bunny, uh, Olivia Wilde's character. Right. She, she, she does, does act in this and she's 
got a significant role in this as well. And she drinks the day away and she parties up a storm and it's a unique, unique way of living while she puts her kids on the bus and then drinks all day and waits for them to come home. Um, it's, it was an odd choice to have Nick Kroll as her husband. Um, there was no humor there, and, and he just, he felt stiff and awkward the entire time, I felt. And Tim Simons, I think his name is, the tall, dorky guy. Right, from, the doctor. Yeah, from Veep. Um, that was an odd choice, too. I think he somewhat pulled it off, but it just, it never meshed for me. Those two characters pulled me out of the story a little bit. Um I enjoyed it though. I think I think she has an incredible Olivia Wilde has an incredible vision as a director. She's got a good eye. She has an incredible eye. Yeah. She is extremely talented with being able to to put down on film what I think her mind's eye sees so that we can share in that journey with her. So sadly, you know, this is not going to get the recognition that it deserves because of all the the tittle tattle that's going on. Is she gonna get another chance, you think? Um I do, I do, but I think I think she made it more difficult for herself, and I think she made it more difficult for every other woman that's trying to get into the same position that she's in. Thank you, right? Is, which is sad. It's a shame. It's a shame. Well, you know, you know that I'm a big fan of, of Miss Pew. Yes, you Not are. Not simply because of her talent, and she is incredibly talented. And she's sweet. And she is incredibly sweet, and has other attributes as well. But the other movie we're talking about this week. You have someone there who you attribute, you, 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 you admire everything about this guy. Let's just say that. You admire everything about Josh Dumel. Dumel. I, I don't really even know how to say his Thank name properly. Thank you, because I don't know how to say it. I say Duhamel. And, Duhamel? Then, and then Kristen, my friend Kristen, says, no, it's Dumel. Or I don't know. But we'll just, we're just going to call him Josh. Okay? There we go. He's got Josh. a neat little movie out. He does. This is a lot of fun. And it, and it proves it once called? again, it's called Bandit. And it proves once again that truth is stranger than fiction. This is based on the flying bandit, the story of a bank robber in Canada back in the 1970s, I believe it was. And this is a, a Josh Dahama plays um, Gilbert Galvin, who also becomes Robert Whiteman. <laughs> Um, as I he... love how he gets that identity, too. <laughs> that <laughs> That's is hilarious. Great. It That's is. Great. <laughs> um, he escapes a prison in Michigan. I'm not sure why he was even put away in Michigan, but it's a very you know minimal security kind of place where he escapes quite easily. And when things go south, he goes north, as he says. And he ends up going up to Canada um, and finds out that, you know, the banks really don't have very good security and he's just not making it at his ice cream man on the corner. <laughs> so he decides he's going to case that joint and he's going to rob it and see what he gets. And he makes a living and then he falls in love and that. And who can blame him? <laughs> I know. Eliza Cutbirth. Yes. yes. Oh, you I, know her. I always liked her. I always liked her. She never got the big role uh, that that she needed. Uh, she was in a movie called um, Girl Next Door, I think. It was, she was really young there. She's also one of the three women in uh, Love Actually. Okay, okay. Where the the dopey guy comes to America. Yeah. And goes okay. to Wisconsin, and the three girls who take him home, she's one of them. Ah, okay. And right. I believe she had a recurring role on 24 as well. Okay. How yeah. old is Love Actually? Oh, geez. That's old. It's really old. Yeah. Okay. I would not have guessed that she, she was really young. Been in okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, she plays Andrea, and um, while Gilbert is on the run and doing all these bank heists, um, he also has somebody hot on his tail, Officer Snides, played by Nestor Carbonell, and I love him. I don't know if you recognize him or not. I think he's got a very unique look. I I recognized him. I couldn't place him, but yeah. Um, and this is based on the novel by Robert Knuckle. Um, and I like the fact that the director, Alan Unger, takes a chance and he breaks the fourth wall. I love that. He uses, he uses only Galvin to talk can, about. can yeah. do that, or Gilbert, sorry, can, can break the fourth wall. And I so enjoyed how they didn't overuse it. They used it at just the right moment so that we connected with this bad guy. And I rooted for him every step of the way. Yeah. But... As truth would have it, things don't always turn out the way that you want to. He put on these incredible disguises, <laughs> which which was half the fun in the way the, the director morphed us through all those bank heists so that we didn't sit through and listen and, to the planning of everything. And how many of them were there? 
59, I believe. Yeah, he rips yeah. off 59 banks in a row without getting caught. And, and, and we, we travel along and mm-hmm. witness all of these and all of his disguises that he uses. And I am laughing my ass off during this movie. This is hilarious. They keep it light. They don't yeah. think yeah. about the fact that, you know, he's holding people up. It's armed he's robbery. He's breaking the law. Yeah. And, and he's, you know, traumatizing the bank tellers. Yeah, whoever. Yeah. But, but they show it in this case as he's so charming and so sweet that nobody is truly traumatized. Even the woman who gets hit twice, right, right, and says, yeah. "Oh, thank you." Yeah, he says, <laughs> "Remember nice me." Day. Yeah. Have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> so I like the fact that they kept it light. They didn't go into the darker shades of probably what did happen on some aspects. And this was a fun escapism movie. And knowing that it was based on a true story made it even more fun. Yeah, it's tricky to keep material like this light. Yes. And I have really had no feelings about Mr. Dumal. Simply because he just... he His blue eyes didn't do a thing for him? No, nah, it's just he never had that part. You know, he needed a better agent. Had this guy been around in the 30s and 40s, he'd have been a major star. <gasps> Absolutely. Major star. Got the looks. And he just has never impressed me. But here, he's just charming as hell. This is the type of role he should have been playing all along. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was hooked from the get-go because of him. And right. that's And that's no easy feat to carry a film like that. He's really good here, and uh, I want to see him do more things uh, like that. Mel Gibson shows up, too. Oh, that's right. Uh, he's a local mobster who uh, Galvin falls into to back a, a bigger uh, play that he wants to make. And there's not too much Mel, which is good. There's just enough. Just enough. Just and enough. he's like this father figure. Kind of, you know? yeah. So, yeah. to me, he plays himself. You yeah. know, somebody who... He's gruff. He knows what he wants. He's going to get tough with you if he needs to. He's fair. But he'll give you a hug, too. Right. Yeah, so he was good. It was good to see him. Uh, I don't. I think this is only playing in certain theaters. I know it's playing over in Bloomington, and you'll okay. have to look for it. But I know it's on video on demand, too. And uh, if you're going to stay in, give this one a shot. I really like yep. it. Yep, pop some popcorn, get your favorite blanket out, curl up on the couch, and laugh. Yes. So speaking of comfort movies. Yeah. <laughs> You, you saw a movie about a train. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so <laughs> I, I saw two movies that you did not. Only one involves a train. So you are referring to... And, and I was wise to go you, that route, correct? so wise. Yes. So wise. Um, oh, Chuck, oh, yeah, Chuck. Yeah, yeah, um, It's called The Railway Children Return. Mm. Now, did you so know... So they went to the end of the line and came back? Um, I think they're just on a track that goes round and round. That's a shame. <laughs> there, is okay. no, there is no stopping point. Okay. Um, there were two TV series, 1951 and 1957. About there these was a, kids? Yep, yep. It's, about, it's all the same these name. kids the, on the train? The Railway Children. They never get off the train on the TV series. They apparently do not. They wow. get on and they come back on because it's just going around okay, in circles. Okay. They have a 1968 TV miniseries. They have a 1970 and a 1991 movie. Then they have a 2000 TV movie. And then in 2016 and again now this year, 2022, they have another movie in the theater. But isn't this all English stuff? Yeah. Okay, so this is on English TV. And English TV movies. I don't know. Because I was not familiar of all, with uh, all okay. of this. And, and I don't know if the premise has changed at all. What's the, wrong with these kids? Um, <laughs> these children uh, are trying to survive World War II. Oh, they, wow. That took a dark turn. Yep. Yeah, it didn't it, though? <laughs> they, uh, but, but it's always light and fluffy. Um, they are growing up in London. Dad is away at war. Mom is fearful for their lives and ends up putting them on a train that takes children to faraway countryside ah, okay. places. okay. Yes, I remember this. I heard about that, this. That um, will keep them safe, and they go into basically like a foster home. The group, the town gets together and auctions off the kids, say, hey, who can take a family of one, two, and... There are three children in this family. Nobody wants to feed three extra mouths during this time. It's a lot of kids. So this um, mom and grandma um, end up taking in the two or the three children. It's really Lily's story. Lily is the oldest girl, and she and her siblings, while playing, find this young soldier named Abe, played by K.J. KJ Akins. He's a young black U.S. soldier, and he's separated from his group. And there's a reason he's separated from this group. And I don't know if the original series or TV movies or movies addressed the whole... Yes, you have a question? Does, does the soldier get on the train? He is, he is not on the train. Oh. 
He is on a train car that is abandoned, hmm. though. So there's still a railway element That's here. That's disappointing. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's a whole race thing. A black officer sure. from the U.S. who has deserted. I figured as much. And then we have these British kids who are trying to figure out the world and what is happening to this young officer. And they all rally together. And everything becomes right with the world. Well, except for the fact that Adolf Hitler is, Hitler is still mm. killing people. Mm. But besides mm. that, um, this was this is an overdone movie. Um, it is. Well, didn't you describe it to me as like a Hallmark film? It is. It is. It's a children's Hallmark mm-hmm. film for history. I think I could put together a lot of different types of Hallmark movies and put them into different genres. Mm-hmm. So this would be the child history movie okay. series. Um, the music, the music just killed me. It is music overload. How should I feel? Oh, I think we should feel this way. Everything was just way overdone. My daughter was um, in the next room and she was listening to the movie while she was trying to work. And she goes, what are you watching? And she goes, it sounds ridiculous. What is it with those accents? Oh, I mean, she had nothing good to say about what she was hearing. And, you know, this is fine for maybe like a sixth, seventh grader who wants to know a little bit about maybe another aspect of World War II that doesn't plunge you Mm -hmm. into, you know, the Holocaust and sees yet another peripheral element of racism. Glad I missed it. There you go. The other one that you missed is Lou, and you're going to be so glad you missed that one. That one is playing on on Netflix. Netflix, Yeah. Starring Alice and Janie (laughs) as a badass, kick ass special ops woman who's who's trying to retire. No, I want to watch this now. (laughs) No, I want to watch it. Um, Actually, she's kind of good in it. I really do. I I love Alice and Janie. I have to tell you. I I, I love I love the Journey Smollett. She's in this as well. Right. And she plays the mom of a little girl and a dad comes back who also is in special ops. And of course. Is actually, he's very evil and he's like crimes against humanity kind of guy. Uh, yes, you have a question, sir. Um, these special ops people that we see in movies. Yeah. Do you think they really exist? I don't know. I don't think I want to know. I mean, these people who can, you know, they just, yeah, they're, they're just really... I don't even know how to describe them, but I know them when I see them in the movies, and yeah. I always wonder, did they really exist? I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. we'll have to delve into that a little yeah. bit more. You let me know what you find out about I will. It. Okay. I will do that. <laughs> so, Dad kidnaps the little girl, and Alice and Janie's character, Lou, and Journey Smiles' character, Hannah, have to go, and of course, there's this horrible tropical storm off the coast of Where are they? some island, Eagle Island, up in uh, near Vancouver. And you know, I saw the preview of this, and this reminded me just visually and kind of the story of that crappy Angelina Jolie movie that came oh, out which last one? year. <laughs> Uh, oh, I might have missed that one. No, it was one where she was the fire. They were caught in the oh, fire. Oh, that was horrible. Oh, it's god awful. Yeah, that yeah. was horrible. This one kind of reminded me just visually of that. Oh, this is so much better than that one. Wow. Yeah, I mean, well, that's, that's a really low praise. bar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, the, the the island. I mean, it's beautiful with the moss and the trees and the waterfalls. I mean, mm-hmm. I would like to go hiking and camping there. That kind of encouraged me. You better to be do that. careful. You might run into a special ops person. I might. You never know who's hiding there. Or Bigfoot. There. Bigfoot. <laughs> or Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Bigfoot Big yeah. feet. Might be there. So those are the two that you missed. Smart yeah. man that you are. Yeah, I didn't miss a thing. <laughs> no, you did not. But let's talk about something we didn't talk about last week, and that is good night, mommy. Okay. <laughs> the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. Okay, so this is a remake from yeah, 2014. 2014. Sorry, right, 2014. Yeah. Creepy little movie about two kids, two it's twins, a, right? Who uh, their mom comes home from having had uh, plastic surgery. Her face is all bandaged up. They spend time with her, and they start to suspect that mom is not mom. Right. And they eventually tie her up and keep her captive as they try to figure out what to do with what they think is an imposter. Right. It doesn't end well. It it does not. And and it was a brilliant film. It's an Austrian film. Yeah, great movie. This is, Look it up. This is a completely um, aesthetic and tonal type of movie. There's not a lot of dialogue. You get the information that you need based on what you're seeing visually. There's a little bit of dialogue, a little bit of conversation, so that you get what a, a little bit more information. And they give you just enough. And they don't. They don't. I think the parents are separated, and they get dropped off at mom's new country home. Which so is this the, is a new place to them. There's, you know, no, nothing around. It's actually quite idyllic. Right. But there's something very cold about this house, and there's something very cold and different about mom. 
Um, so then, then we have a remake. On Na- Amazon. On Amazon, streaming now, um, starring Naomi Watts. And, ah, God, I struggled. The first 20 minutes of the movie, I turned it off. Um, because I loved the original film so much. It was so dark and disturbing and psychologically chilling. So I struggled with the uh, remake. Um, I felt that it was overdone. They gave too much information. They didn't let you think. Let's jump to the chase. Here. Okay, to the okay. chase. Chase, chase, uh, chase. Um, yeah, I didn't like it either. And one of the big reasons I ha- didn't like it was it veers so far away from the original. And the ending in the original is absolutely horrific. It's brilliant, though. It is, but it's horrific. This thing, I don't even know what it means. Okay, so if you don't want to know what the ending is, go ahead and tune out, turn off. We'll see you next week. Um, Also, we have a, before you tune out, and we'll see you next week, we do have a giveaway. Take a look at our Facebook page for the exorcism, my best friend's exorcism. Right. Um, I think what happened is that... um, they both died in the barn fire. And Elias, then what? So it's like heaven yeah. at um, the end? Then those two are okay with themselves because they died together and they'll be together. That's what I think happened. Yeah, so shit. it's similar <laughs> to the ending of the first one. Yeah. The first one was perfect. It yeah. was perfect. Yeah, even, you know, I don't know what Amazon Prime costs a year. But, 100 uh, bucks. 100 bucks. Yeah, okay. maybe a little bit more now. Okay, all right, well... I was gonna say this one's this one's for free. Then if you pay for your Amazon Prime, and even that's too much. Yeah, I, uh, seek out the original. I think the original is two ninety nine on Prime, and well worth it. Mm-hmm. Incredibly well done psychological thriller. We have got so many movies to talk about next week. We do. Don't I don't we? even know where to begin. Uh, we have Bros uh, with Billy Eichner. Oh, we have an interview too. And we have an interview with him. And who's his co star? Uh, Luke McFarland. Luke McFarland. We had a chance to sit down and talk to him. Both of them, uh, that'll air on WCIA on Monday, the 27th. We also have the uh, new Marilyn Monroe film starring Anna de Armas. Blonde is uh, opening on uh, Netflix next week. We need to get to that as well. The Good House with uh, Kevin Klein and Sigourney Weaver. Uh, that's coming out as well. We have so much to do. And that's just... a. Uh, the tip of the iceberg. There's so many other things that w- I wrote down uh, <laughs> that uh, I-, I can't remember, but I think I counted nine films. Oh my week. goodness! Well, oh, we there's will... that w- great one with Emily Watson coming out too. Okay. Yeah. Very good. All right. Well, tune in next week. We'll have lots to cover. Go to our Facebook page. Enter to win sneak preview code to watch my best friend's exorcism. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.